Welcome back to our historical journey through the ancient civilizations of Africa. Today, we delve into the fascinating story of the formation of the Kushite kingdoms in the Nubian Nile Valley. Sit tight and join us as we uncover the secrets of this enigmatic era. Prehistoric Nubia, a region situated in present-day Sudan, was characterized by its rich cultural diversity. It was home to various Nilo-Saharan and Afro-Asiatic speaking populations, which contributed to the cultural depth of its people and the subsequent rise of kingdoms in the area. Notably, the Afro-Asiatic C group, A group, and pre-Kerma cultures played significant roles in shaping the region's history. To the west, along the Yellow Nile or Wadi Hawa, the majority of inhabitants were Nilo-Saharan speakers, particularly belonging to the Eastern Sudanic stock. This group included the ancestors of Nubian speakers, Nilotic speakers, Sermic speakers, and possibly Meroitic speakers. However, the classification of the Meroitic language remains a topic of debate among linguistic academics, with scholars such as Claude Rilly suggesting a Nilo-Saharan affiliation and Christopher Ehret suggesting an Afro-Asiatic connection. Our story begins with the C group, a culture located in Lower Nubia. The C group people were known for their distinctive pottery and fascinating stone circle tombs. They were also speakers of the Cushitic languages that thrived in the region. The C group culture of Lower Nubia, a culture that flourished during the Neolithic period, was characterized by its unique lifestyle. The C group people were both farmers and semi-nomadic herders relying on agriculture as well as a small number of cattle for their sustenance. Initially, they were believed to have been a peaceful people due to the absence of weapons in their tombs. However, further excavations revealed a surprising discovery. Daggers, short swords and battle axes were found in C group graves, suggesting that they possessed a more complex and possibly combative nature than previously thought. Moving up to Upper Nubia, we encounter the Prekerma culture, an early culture centered in Sudan. The Prekerma people also likely spoke Afro-Asiatic languages. The Prekerma culture, located in Upper Nubia, was a notable agro-pastoralist society. This culture maintained contact with the Lower Nubian A-group culture and produced similar pottery to them, highlighting their cultural connections. However, the Prekerma culture is best known for its settlements between 3000 to 2600 BC. One important site in the archaeological record is Sai Island, which yielded a significant number of cereal storage parts. This discovery suggests that agriculture was practiced on a larger scale during this period compared to preceding periods. The abundance of these storage pots implies a thriving agricultural system reflecting the economic and social advancements of the pre-Kerma culture. Meanwhile, in Lower Nubia, the A group thrived, leaving behind large graves and necropolises. Physically resembling East African populations and the early southern pre-dynastic cultures of Upper Egypt, these individuals likely spoke Afro-Asiatic or non-Eastern Sudanic Nilo-Saharan languages. The A group culture of Lower Nubia was known for its extensive trade networks, particularly with the early dynastic cultures of ancient Egypt. This cultural exchange facilitated the transfer of valuable resources such as incense, ebony and ivory. The A group people were active participants in the international trade routes of the time, leveraging their strategic location along the Nile River. One notable artifact from this period is the Kustul incense burner, which provides intriguing insights into the A group culture. This artifact, discovered in the coastal region of Lower Nubia, reveals a fascinating practice of an early dynastic Egyptian-like culture. Interestingly, this predates the emergence of the earliest ancient Egyptian dynasties by at least a century. The coastal incense burner is a remarkable testament to the cross-cultural influences and the rich history of interaction between the A-group culture of Lower Nubia and the early dynastic cultures of ancient Egypt. As said earlier, to the west of the Nubian Nile Valley, the Wadi Hawa region was home to various Eastern Sudanic-speaking cultures. Groups such as the Litaband cultures initiated migration from western regions of the Wadi Hawa to the rest of the area. 
The lighter band culture, a group of Eastern Sudanic Nilo-Saharan speakers, emerged in the 5th millennium BC as cattle herding pastoralists. Originating from the northwest of the Wadi Hawa, these people undertook eastward migrations along this region. The lighter band culture was renowned for their remarkable pottery, known as lighter band decoration, which displayed intricate and striking designs. Grinding tools were also abundant in their material culture, indicating their reliance on agriculture. Additionally, ostrich eggshell beads held significant importance, serving as symbolic elements within their society. These cultural artifacts provide valuable insight into the lives and practices of the lighter band people. With the Nilo-Saharan communities, like the pre-Sermic and the pre-Nilotic speakers living closer to the Nubian Nile Valley in the lower Wadi Hawa, they developed the herringbone culture of this region. This culture had notable connections to the Nubian Nile Valley. Over time, there emerged a significant relation and interaction between the Eastern Sudanic-speaking people of the Wadi Hawa and the pre-existing Nile Nubian cultures. Trade flourished between the Lower Wadi Hawa and the A group, as well as the pre-Kerma cultures. We know this because during the 4th millennium BC, the region of the Lower Wadi Hawa experienced significant changes due to increasing aridity. The arid conditions led to a growing importance of cattle in the economic and social life of the people. They adopted features that were previously known only in the western regions of the Wadi Hawa, particularly from the lighter band culture. Although there was an abundance of cultural exchange, the people of the lower Wadi Hawa demonstrated originality, seen in their distinct pottery styles. Notably, incised herringbone patterns were prevalent, indicating strong contact with the A-group and pre-Kerma cultures of the Nubian Nile Valley. This affiliation was further reflected in the archaeozoological record, as the size of the cattle bones found in the lower Wadi Hawa overlapped with those from the Egyptian and Sudanese Nile Valley. This suggests an exchange of livestock or the adoption of efficient husbandry strategies previously developed, for example, in ancient Egypt since the Old Kingdom. However, due to desertification in the Wadi Hawa, the Eastern Sudanic speakers faced a diaspora. They spread across Sudan and Chad, carrying their language and culture with them. And here comes one of the key elements in our story, the Meroitic language. Though it is still debated, Discoveries showing Meroitic affinities with Eastern Sudanic languages as well as Afro-Asiatic languages are undeniable. Scholars in favor of a Nilo-Saharan affinity classify it as a Northeastern Sudanic language, closely related to the Nubian languages, while scholars who favor an Afro-Asiatic affinity don't actually give Meroitic a specific category because of how little is known of the language. Nonetheless, with the arrival of Eastern Sudanic populations from the Wadi Hawa to Kerma, a significant turning point occurred. This migration, as well as the interaction between the earlier Afro-Asiatic speaking communities of the region and Egyptian cultural influence, marked the beginning of the Kerma city-state, further enhancing the civilization in Nubia. Meroitic was attested on the Nile around the second millennium BC, adding a new chapter to the rich history of the region. The story takes another twist as we enter the Egyptian colonial period. After the end of the Kerma culture, the Egyptian New Kingdom expanded south into Nubia under the reign of Pharaoh Thutmose III. This marked the beginning of the Egyptian colonial period, lasting until 1070 BC, but the resilience of the Nubian people would not be dampened. Instead, they rose to reclaim their land and establish the majestic Napatan Empire under the 25th dynasty of Egypt, which would emerge around the 8th century BC, initiating the iconic era of the Black Pharaohs. Thank you for watching this video and exploring the fascinating origins of ancient Nubian civilization. If you're eager to delve deeper into the ancient prehistory of East and North Africa, as well as the intriguing history of the Cushitic and Nilotic peoples, I invite you to check out the PDF document, A Journey on Nilotic Prehistory, linked in the description below, if you want to read in further detail about the ancient history of the Sudan and the ancient prehistory of North and East Africa. They will provide you with valuable insights and information.
Moreover, if you're passionate about history, DNA, archaeology, and all things Africa, I encourage you to join our vibrant community on our Discord server. There, you can engage in lively discussions, share your thoughts, and connect with like-minded individuals who share your interests. Let's continue to unravel the mysteries of the past together.